Okay, let's go ahead and get the result. Oh, it did exactly. It actually, I think, did better than the training data. What's up, guys? In today's video, I wanted to go over a new model release from Mistral AI, that being Mistral. This model is the new state-of-the-art model, and in today's video, I'm going to go over some of the details, as well as how to fine-tune it on custom data sets to really gain the full power of these open source models. So let's get into it. So as the name implies, the model is a mix of the Mistral 7B models. In particular, it is an 8 by 7X uh, mixture of models, which is called a MOE model, which is called a mixture of experts model. Uh, it outperforms Llama 70B uh, while being six times faster. And the reason it can do that is because at any point in time, it only activates two of the experts models at a time. So roughly 7 billion parameters times two. So roughly 13 billion parameters are activated in a forward pass for each token. And I say 13B instead of 14B because as you're aware, most likely there is the Llama 13B models and other 13B models. And so this model will be roughly as quick as those models, but have performance uh, near that of Llama 70B and GPT 3.5. Something that is worth noting is intuitively you'd think that uh, eight times seven, that it would have roughly 56 billion parameters. However, important to know is that the model the model experts share the attention weights. They just have their own separate feed forward layers. And so at any point in time, two of those feed forward um, expert models are used to then uh, develop the final token output. And so it sees, sees right there 46.7 billion parameters rather than 56 billion, 56 billion parameters. So not only is it faster than Llama 70B, it also will take less memory. And of course, has better performance. You can take a further look for yourself at the blog post on the Mistral AI website, if you would like. Uh, they also say how in the release, they released the base model and the instruct model. And in this video, we're going to make our own instruct model and uh, following the process, of this video, you could make a model on, you know, any custom data set. So let's get into the actual fine tuning. To do this, we'll be using two repos that I maintain, the fine tune LLMs repo, as well as the Llama data set formats. Uh, with a small tweak, this can be used on Mistral as well, but I'm going to make an instruct model for the purpose of this video. And the code right here, which is a change in the flag value for the model can make the data set very easily. And the data set that we'll be using is Dolly 15K. And if you haven't seen the video yet on this code for the instruct data set, you can uh, check it out in the link up in the corner right now. So before we get the software up and running, let's go over the requirements real quick. So when it comes to hardware, if you want to be on a consumer platform like I am most of the time, you either need two RTX 3090s or RTX 4090s, roughly 32 gigabytes of RAM, although it may be less. And the reason for that is you need roughly 48 gigabytes of VRAM for this model for QLORA. Uh, a server wise, you either need an Ampere or an Ada GPU. This is for flash attention, uh, in which um, 3090s uh, Ampere, 4090s Ada. Again, 48 gigabytes of VRAM or more, and this is total. You don't need it on one, but it's not a big deal on uh, server hardware. Uh, I've done it on 840, and uh, an A100 would obviously work as well. Um, longer sequences will need more VRAM, but I have trained a model for sequences up to 1024 on Mixtral, so, and I had plenty. I probably could go double that. But uh, keep that in mind if you want to do like 32K long fine tunes, you may need to stick to A100s. And then um, you're going to need to have Docker and NVIDIA Docker installed. I have a video on how to do that for uh, Windows 10 slash 11, which you can see in the corner. 
If you're on Linux, I will have links in the description on how to install it, but it's much simpler. And if you have Linux installed, you can you can handle it. Um, for the creation of the data set, I also recommend having a virtual environment of some type. I'll be using Conda, but just use a virtual environment so you can install the software needed to make the data set and not have to worry about uh, dependencies getting lost and mixed up. So what I have here is a paper space VM. Normally I would do this on my RTX 3090s, but they are currently doing a training right now and I don't want to kill it. So I'm using two A5000s, which are very, very close to 3090s. And just to show how you would do it on consumer hardware. And if we do NVIDIA SMI, we can see that we have two of them, 24 gigabytes of VRAM each. So if it works on uh, this VM, it will work with a setup of two 3090s or two 4090s. So now let's install the software that we need. Uh, I will be installing the fine tuning software and as well as software to create an instruction data set from the Dolly 15K data set. If you already have your own data set, you don't need to do the Dolly 15K steps, but if you want to follow along, you can uh, do so. So let's go ahead and get clone the software. And we'll go ahead and type in git clone and then the HTTP link that I copied there. And I already did that, but uh, you would hit enter. And then we'd also want the Llama dataset one. So let's go ahead and copy that one. And again, you would type in git clone. You'd hit enter, but I already have it. And so now we see three folders, um, the fine tuning one, the dataset one, and then the text generation interface, while I'm not going to go over the details in this video, it's a very good software to deploy these models and we'll be using that to um, show the results of the fine tuned model later in the video. So I'm going to go ahead and create the dataset first. So let's go into the Llama datasets folder and you'll see right now in the left I have a virtual environment using Conda uh, called GPT. Um, and I recommend using a virtual environment and then we'll do pip install the requirements again I've already done this but it should take at most a few minutes and then let's go ahead and go into the instruction folder where we can make the instruct data set so here's the command that you're going to run when you're inside the instruct folder Python make data set with the dash M for the model flag the model we want to run, which in this case is uh, the Mixtral model. I had the Instruct one there, but either the base or the Instruct would do fine for this purposes. Uh, and then uh, the name, dash dash n for the name, I want to call it Mixtral Instruct. And then this is very important. Uh, in fine tuning, you need a pad token due to a, um, in my opinion, bad setup with hugging face um, there's not an easy way to use uh, padding tokens without having them already in the tokenizer or resizing the output layer and in input layer so what I do is I make sure that my data sets do not have any errors in the and then with regard to tokens and then set them to typically zero which is the unknown token and as long as you, your data set doesn't have any unknown tokens, this can act as your pad token. So that's the logic behind that. And let's go ahead and run that. And um, it also by default has a max length of 1024. You can change that if you want, but uh, well, at least with Dolly 15K, there is not um, a lot of entries past uh, 1024 and the compute goes up a lot, so I just cut it off there. And uh, we can see then some metrics on the data set, the max length, the minimum length, which is very short, the mean length, standard deviation, and how many entries we have. So we have a 14,000 data set here, which is, um, you know, it'd be nice to have more, but that is plenty for a basic 
fine-tuned model. So this code also has an 80% train split, a 19.9% validation split, and then we use 0.1% for the test. And we can go ahead and see that now. If we do cat mixture instruct test, we see all the different outputs there that are not in the training or validation. And we can use those after fine tuning to see truly how well our model is working. While it's on screen, we might as well talk about the format that I decided for the instruct model. Basically, how it works is that you have an instruction. So in this case, right here, extract the ingredients required to prepare guacamole from the text, separate them with a the comma. That is the instruction. The input is then like context. So in this case, the recipe. And then the output is, you know, what we would expect um, the model to output if it is performing well. And additionally, not all of them have input. The input is optional context. Some are just, here's an example here. Should differential privacy be used in the US census? And then no context, no input, just the output. So that is the format that I decided on. Um, I'm not saying that's the best, but that is what I use and is an example of a valid format. So let's go ahead and move these CSV files to the needed folder. And to do that, I'll do copy star dash dot CSV. It'll copy all CSV files and we want to move it to the fine tuning folder inside the fine tune LLMs software. And we did that and now they are in that folder. So now let's go ahead and set up the fine tuning software. And this player is where you'll need Docker and NVIDIA Docker. So let's go ahead and enter the folder. And the first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to build the Docker image. This will install all the needed dependencies from deep speed to bits and bytes, uh, everything needed to fine tune LLMs in a variety of different methods. So let's go ahead and do that. This will take, uh, depending on your CPU anyway, and internet, anywhere from a few minutes to up to 10. So I'll go ahead and do this now. Uh, Again, I've already done it, so it's already cached, but uh, go let this build and then we will need to then run it. So what run image does is it passes in all the GPUs and allows shared memory from the host, which is needed for um, if you want to train on multiple GPUs, uh, distributed data parallel, that's needed. Um, if you're using Zshell, which I highly recommend, it will pass in uh, your config and history, which is nice. Um, and then it will pass in the cache. So that's where you download all, where the downloaded models go. And so you don't have to download them every single time. And um, yeah, and then it'll mount it to the workspace folder. So let's go ahead and do that now. And we'll see that we now have the fine tune LLM software inside the Docker container with GPU access, um, but we have everything installed now. And then we're in the workspace folder. So the folder that we actually fine tune in is the fine tuning repo folder. So let's go ahead and enter that one. And if we do LS, we can see our data sets right here. And the program that we will use to fine tune is the TRL fine tune.py. There are many, many flags for this for this program. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of them. So here are the flags. There are many of them. Um, and rather than go through each single one, I'm gonna show you an example of how I would run this code and I'll explain what those flags do. So here are the flags that I have used for fine tuning this model. We have the model flag, what we're using, the train data set with TF, VF, the validation data set, Split model is needed if you want to split the model onto multiple GPUs uh, to make it possible to fine tune models that you wouldn't be able to fit on one GPU. Block size, how, how, how long the context window is. Lower alpha, 16. Uh, I'm using a lower rank of 64 here. Uh, epics is one, I would increase this to a larger number um, just so that uh, we know it trains enough. 
the pad token ID, zero, all linear. Uh, the Qlora paper shows that if you target all linear layers, you get better results. Um, and then with regards to log steps, this is, I did um, a off camera run, how many steps are in an epic. And this is a quarter of the number of steps in an epic. So I want to basically log, test, and save every quarter epic. This is wrong, but this would also be 196. So we're saving and testing every 196 steps. Gradient checkpointing is very important to save memory. Definitely use that. Use in four. That's for Qlora. You need that for. Um, you need that for uh, all GPUs, unless you want to use multiple A100s. Um, the output where you want the checkpoints to be at. I'm using a batch size of two. I could not do four, ran out of memory, but I think three may work, but I just did two. Gradient accumulation steps. You take the batch size, multiply by gradient accumulation steps, you get an effective batch size of 16. Completion only, I'll talk a bit more in a bit. And then warm-up steps, I aimed for um, roughly 10% of the first epic for me warm-up. Warm up is where you start with a lower learning rate and raise it to the learning rate that you set it to. One flag I wanted to go into more detail about is the completion only flag. So what this does is rather than have the loss, which is what the model is trying to optimize to decrease, be based upon all the tokens, which is what the, it normally is, what you can do is, is if you specify a certain number of tokens for the completion only, Basically, it will only use tokens after this, in this case, these tokens here, that all the tokens after these tokens will be used to calculate the loss. This is the equivalent of, in the data set, output colon. And so basically, all the input will not be used to train the model. It will be used to give context to the model, but what's actually going to be what we're optimizing for is the output, which just makes sense. So for models like instruct models and chat models, although chat models are a bit different, uh, I recommend using completion loss because it will make your model focus more on the output, which is what you care about. So let's go ahead and run this. I made a slight change. We'll just see what the performance characteristics are. And uh, yeah, let's see what it's like once it's up and loading and running. So here the model has been loaded and there's a few things I want to point out right now. So since we're doing all linear layers, it has detected and is targeting layers that normally aren't targeted. Typically, these models only target things like query or and or the key um, with LoRa, but research shows that all linear layers should be targeted. And so we're targeting um, the key, the query, output, the value. I believe W2 and W3 are, and W1 are feed forward. The LM head are the, is the token output layer. And then importantly, or at least what feels to be important to me for fine tuning mixed role is the gate. And the gate is what selects which expert to choose. And if you aren't targeting that, uh, what models picked wouldn't change is what, is what I would assume. So definitely important to use all linear layers. Um, you'll then have the option to use weight and biases. I recommend it. But for this purposes, we're gonna hit three and not use it. So here we can see the results of the fine tuning, the speed. So, so far we are three steps in of one epic, which is 737, getting about 36 seconds per step. On my RTX 3090s, because I've already done a fine tune of this, it is roughly 30 seconds a step. So the results are about what you expect. Um, you'll get better performance with better GPUs. But um, you know, for some data sets, you only need to fine tune one epic. Uh, I only need to fine tune on this data set for one epic. So this is perfectly acceptable results. You'll get the results uh, overnight, basically. Um, but for some models and some data sets, you may need to fine tune on many epics, in which case you may want to get more GPUs, do eight at a time, and not eight split, but eight trained on each GPU at once. Um, but that is uh, outside of the scope of this video. So as I've been hinting, I actually have already fine-tuned this model on my RTX 3090s um, with Qlora, as we did in the video, and you can go ahead and use the model that I fine-tuned. 
uh, just like you would any other Hugging Face model. And um, this will be in the description, of course, the link. Um, but now that it's fine-tuned, let's go ahead and try a few examples that I set aside in the test data set. So for the example, let's go ahead and use the guacamole one that we talked about very briefly early in the video. Extract the ingredients required to prepare guacamole. And then here, just information about guacamole, traditions, how to make it, things like that. Let's go ahead and give that to the model and see how it does. So I'm serving this model with text generation inference and um, recommend using that. But uh, let's go ahead and get the result. Okay, let's go ahead and get the result. Avocado, salt, lime. Oh, it did exactly. It actually, I think, did better than the training data uh, suggested that it did. The other one gave some additional information, like the following is your answer, and then listed them. This just did what it, we asked for, which was give the results in a CSV. So now that we have shown how to fine tune Mixtral, I just want to leave the video with some thoughts. Uh, I'm very excited for these uh, mixture of experts model. Um, I don't see any reason why um, you couldn't do this with something like Llama, but I could be misunderstanding um, how, how that works. Uh, I'm excited for new models that are built of, of bigger experts, such as 13B, experts rather than um, 7B experts. Something that I am interested in and I am pretty confident there's nothing preventing this from happening is that currently with Mixtral we only select two experts at a time. I'm pretty sure that it would be as simple as changing a value in a config and fine-tuning to allow maybe three experts at a time. In which case of course it would be slower but perhaps the results would be even better at still a relatively low cost of hosting. So I'm definitely going to look into that into the future. So with that, that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you like the video, please consider leaving a like. If you like this kind of content, please consider leaving a subscription. Consider joining the Discord for some chats on technical topics and for technical help. Thanks so much for watching and please stay brilliant.